Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So The Sandman is a Netflix live adaptation of the really beloved graphic novel series written by Neil Gaiman. Now, I myself have never read the series and I really didn't know anything about this besides the fact that it is about Dream and Morpheus and there's this whole fantasy element to it. So that's about the extent of my knowledge going into this series. And this is one that a lot of people have been waiting for and so I was really anticipating watching this just to kind of see what it's all about. And since I have not read the books, I really didn't have any comparisons or expectations of what this series has to offer. And so the general story here is that we have these group of really powerful godlike beings called the Endless. And one of them is Dream or Morpheus. He's basically the lord of dreams and nightmares. And that is how all of us have our dreams and nightmares. And all of this is essential to keeping the other realm where all these endless and other fantasy creatures live versus the real world. And within this story, Dream accidentally gets captured by a cult in the early 1900s because they were trying to originally get his sibling death, but instead they got the lord of dreams. And so for the next century or 100 years, millions of people are no longer dreaming or having nightmares. And all of this really causes problems both in Dream's world but also in the real world as well. And within this, a lot of the creatures that Dream's has created, whether it's just normal dreams or nightmares, actually escape out into the real world. And whenever he returns, it's really his job to put everything back in order and also bring back all these creatures back into the dream world and give people back their dreams and nightmares. So that's kind of the overall general story of The Sandman. Now getting to the things that I absolutely love about this series is first and foremost, the overall production quality here. This series looks amazing. You could tell that Netflix spent a lot of money on here and it's not just the visuals, the music, the costume designs, the environment, everything here is top notch. And Neil Gaiman is one of the producers of this show so a lot of what's presented here might be very familiar to people who read the graphic novels and since he was really deeply involved with this, you could tell that everything here visually is a representation of his ideas and his story. So that's the first thing that got me. And then second to that, it's just the overall world itself. The whole endless, there's hell, there's other gods, there's a whole bunch of other things going on here. And along with that, we have the real world and also creatures and human beings that go in between these. So there's a lot of story that could be told here. And you could tell just based upon this show that there is way more here than just these initial 10 episodes. And so the entire production quality, the world building and so forth is the best thing about this series for me. And then to go along with that, it's just the amazing cast of characters and the acting behind it. Tom Sturridge, who plays Dream or Morpheus, just does an amazing job. You could tell just by the way he acts that this character is very benevolent, powerful, methodical, and mysterious all at once. And there is a lot going on with this character just by how he looks at you. And that is something that is really hard to do when it comes to acting and Tom Sturridge does an amazing job. But I could say that for practically everybody else in this series from Lucifer, from the librarian to John D, and especially the Corinthian played by Board Horbrook. He does an awesome job and he really fits this whole idea of the main antagonist and villain but all the other characters in this story and the acting i really did enjoy it especially dreams other siblings even though they weren't in it as much i really did appreciate what they brought to the table especially death that was probably my favorite sibling overall and since these characters and the acting was so strong you really did care about what happened to these characters throughout and as the story grows and maybe in future seasons you'll grow to appreciate these characters more and more and hopefully they'll be able to maintain the same actors and actresses for this entire Sandman series. Protect your online privacy and keep data brokers from selling your personal information by using Delete Me, the number one privacy information remover service since 2010. Sign up today and get 20% off your first order. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. 
Now getting to the things that I didn't enjoy as much about the series, it's just the whole way in which these 10 episodes are structured. They don't really have a linear structure as you might think, especially after episode 5 and 6 where it goes into a completely different territory. And as far as I understand it, this is kind of how the graphic novel was set up where it's just different stories, it's all in the same world. It is in the same overall general story, but sometimes you feel like you're jumping to a different story and characters. And at least for me, that kind of put me off. And in some episodes, like episode five, The Diner, which a lot of people like in the graphic novel, I found that to be one of the more weaker episodes. I was mostly bored in that, you know? But then the episode where Dream is interacting with this person who's been around for hundreds of years, I found that really, really fun to watch. And so that for me is probably the biggest negative. The overall structure might not be something that you've been used to, um, looking for a linear story. And then the other thing is some of the pacing and the different nature of the story later on might throw you off. But besides that, I really did thoroughly enjoy the Sandman and I look forward to coming back to the world of Dream, Morpheus, the Endless, and I can't wait to see what happens with him and Lucifer. And so those are my thoughts on this Sandman series, the first 10 episodes. Hopefully we will get another season, which I think we will. But if you had any of your own thoughts on this, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my sci-fi fantasy show and film reviews, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area below. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Go Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group.